All right, y'all, it's that time again. It is time to expose Toyota. They have gone totally woke. You are not gonna believe what is under the hood of this story, so strap in because it is insane. If you're even slightly moderate, you are going to be questioning if you should ever give this company a dime in the future. Before we start, I want y'all to keep in mind that Toyota also is massive in Japan, a country that I don't think is going to take kindly to a lot of the things we're about to point out. Also, here in America, they depend on families buying their vehicles, again, I don't think families are going to be big fans of what I'm about to expose. Let's start with this post on Instagram from drag queen Miss Mary Lou Pearl. Men out there with a Toyota truck, you are not ready for this. This drag queen not only says that Toyota gave them this truck for this ad that I'm about to play you, but they also sponsored a drag program at Brave Trails. What is Brave Trails, you might ask? I'll tell you after you see this ad. What, darling? Not what you were expecting? I just wanna say if you have a Toyota Tundra, I am sorry. I'm just sorry. But now you guys need to find out what Brave Trails is. Brave Trails is a summer camp that invites children who identify as LGBTQ+, and Toyota was funding a drag program there. And we've got video. And look, whether you agree with this stuff or not, I think everybody should be able to agree that people who are viscerally opposed to it for faith reasons or whatever reason they may have should not feel like when they spend their money at a major corporation, it's going to be used to fund things like this that they are completely opposed to. The other side would hate it if it was something that they were opposed to. This should be a no-brainer for corporations. This is not okay. And just to be clear, I'm willing to bet that Toyota thought we would never find out about this, mainly because there's not real influence here. 784 likes is a weird thing to jeopardize a massive cross-section of your customer base for. But Toyota did it because they thought we wouldn't find out but we did. Oh, and we're not even close to done here. There is much, much more. And by the way, there are photos and videos from that camp that I find much more disturbing, but I'm not putting them up here for the sake of the children who are in it, but anybody can go look at their website or their Instagram page and see. This camp is not one that we would say your average person would think is a good idea. Now let's talk about this photo. Toyota is bragging here about taking part in the Dallas Pride event, okay? Dallas Pride, they were a big sponsor. And I've got to show you some clips. This first clip is really long because Toyota brought a comical amount of cars, so we're gonna try to go through it as fast as we can, but the second clip from the announcers is something you need to hear. At Grand Lexus as well, we know Toyota moved here some years back, bringing some 4,000 people from the West Coast, employing people here. They are an amazing corporate citizen in so many ways, including supporting the LGBTQ community, not just in who they employ, but who they reach and how they celebrate. Toyota in the house, along with their crew, and we were just talking about seeing some of the different groups that get involved, yeah. and some of these just major corporations who have stood up and said, you know what, not only do we you know, support this parade, and, and I don't know what the word approve of this break. We're going to be here yeah. and maybe be an ally or, you know, just be connected. And so companies like Toyota are showing up and, and really standing out here. This one with the trans flag on it is absolutely beautiful. And I love that Toyota told us that they believe life is best lived in full color. That's what they brought their nine fleets of Toyota and Lexus cars, trucks, and FUZs out today. Yes, nine fleets. Now listen to what the announcers say about what business owners are saying about customers who maybe don't want to take part in this, maybe don't want their money going to this agenda that sexualizes kids by bringing them to these events where they're exposed to sexual behavior. More on that in a minute. Well, and, and let's just say, they may deal, these companies who are here today, they may deal with fallout. They may deal with people who decide based on their participation that they don't want to do business with them. And the business owners I've talked to and presented that to them as a possibility say, well, maybe those aren't people we want to do business with. I mean, frankly, if we're going to talk about it, that's, that, that's part of their commitment to this. Do you hear that? So maybe they don't want to do business with you. Some parents are smart. They've got the wagon with the kids. This is a family fun day, like you just said, with the kids in the wagon. Let's see just how family friendly and child friendly the Dallas Pride event was. These are some of the things kids were watching at Dallas Pride as their parents strolled them around. Let's take a closer look at this guy specifically. So does this look appropriate to you? Is this something that we should be exposing children to? The answer is very clearly no, this is not appropriate for kids, but Toyota sponsored an event where guys like this walked around with all that hanging out in front of children. I don't think that's appropriate. I think that major corporations should probably not sponsor events like this. I don't want to spend my money at companies who are going to turn around and use that money to fund stuff like this being exposed to kids. And I'm willing to take a big bet here that most families in America and most folks in Japan feel the same way I do. It's not about hate. These people are adults. They can do what they want in their personal time. But I do hate that they are sexualizing themselves in front of children. I do hate that children 
are being put in a position where they are seeing stuff like this and major corporations are funding the events where it's happening. As you can see on their website, this stuff is all intrinsically linked with their quote, DE and I journey. And where are a lot of these woke policies in their quote, DE and I journey coming from? Well, look no further than the Human Rights Campaign, one of the most Orwellian named organizations I can think of because honestly, I don't see anything they do that has to do with human rights. All they are basically is an activist group that hates the right. And their organization on a regular basis is framing Republicans as some existential threat to humanity. Just look at their social media accounts and you will see this is an activist organization for the far left, not a human rights group that's fighting for the human rights of everybody. Nothing like that, okay? This group has a scoring system called the CEI system. The Corporate Equality Index is one that scores corporations on basically how woke they are. So the 100 score that Toyota has for 15 consecutive years means that Toyota is actually funding transitions not just for their employees, but also for the children of employees in states where it is legal. Just check out this recent video of the HRC president. Donald Trump doesn't love America. Donald Trump doesn't believe in America. He wants to erase us. That is who Toyota has hitched their wagon to. And I want to point something out. It's not just the score. They have partnered with the HRC to support the Equality Act, which again, Orwellian name, has nothing to do with equality. It means that men can go in the bathroom with your daughters. It means that boys and men can play against girls and women in sports. It is the invasion of female spaces. That is what that bill actually is. But it doesn't end there. It gets worse. They also partnered with the HRC to put out a letter that is a statement against anti LGBTQ plus state legislation. I wonder what that is. Let's take a look. The quote anti-LGBTQ plus legislation that they're talking about, they say pertains to transgender youth. So the bills they are opposing are the ones like the one we got passed here in Tennessee that bans sex change surgeries, hormones, and puberty blockers for children. So if you're a Toyota driver or customer, you have to ask yourself, why is Toyota so interested in making sure that it is legal for children to get sex changes? I think that's weird. I personally do not feel comfortable giving my money to a company that is supporting and pushing for children to be able to get sex changes. Their ties with the HRC are deep. They have also been a title sponsor for the Time to Thrive event for the HRC. You can see here. The Time to Thrive event was held in cooperation with the NEA, the largest teachers union, and the entire conference was essentially built around pushing wokeness into education, and that includes the crazy gender ideology. At this conference, they literally talked about how to bring LGBTQ plus lesson plans in for elementary school. Elementary school. And if you're a Toyota customer, just know that Toyota is bragging about giving $300,000 specifically to LGBTQ plus organizations to help them during the pandemic. Part of that money went to the HRC, but part of it went to the Trevor Project. What's the issue with the Trevor Project? The Trevor Project hosts forums for adults to talk to teens about secretly transitioning and to talk about sex. The Trevor Project has something called a quick exit feature for children so that it will wipe from their browser history and remove the website from the screen in case their parents walk in while they're on it. One mom even went undercover on the Trevor Project forums and she came across adult transgender identifying individuals who were going and talking to children about their masturbation addictions and about autogynephilia, which is men who were aroused by the idea of being a woman. In some cases, minors were found on the Trevor Project forum chats talking to adults about BDSM, sexual preferences, and were even asked by adults about paraphilias with questions like, what's the weirdest sexual thing you know? Again, I'm willing to make a very bold bet that most Toyota customers in Japan and in the United States are not cool with knowing that Toyota has given at least $100,000 to the Trevor Project now that they know what goes on at the Trevor project. Toyota does draw lines though on what requests they will fund. Where do they draw that line? Churches. Toyota also brags about taking part in the HRC's Workplace Equality Summit, which essentially is a summit to push wokeness in the workplace. They also brag about partnerships with Lambda Legal and the Dallas Resource Center, all three of which support transitioning children. Yes, sex changes for kids. Again, I don't know why this keeps coming up for a car company, why they would be so interested and so enthusiastic about supporting the transition of children. Children who, again, are not old enough to buy cigarettes, get a tattoo, or anything else along those lines, but they're advocating for sex changes. Like many of the other companies we've highlighted, Toyota also has ERG groups where they separate employees into these groups based on what race they are or what type of sex they like to have. And yes, it is the employee's choice to enter these groups, but it's done on company time with company money. Now, see, I think it's weird because back when I was younger, if you went to work and you talked about what kind of sex you like to have or you signaled it in some way, that was considered sexual harassment. 
but now you get a club for it at work? That's a little odd. And listen, this isn't about the fact that people are gay. You're an adult, do what you want. I've been very clear about that. It's the reality that there are different rules for different groups of people. That is fundamental unfairness, period. And it's also about the fact that it is just not appropriate for work. Toyota is also really big on allyship and adding your pronouns to your email, which they reiterate multiple times. Those ERG groups are also the reason why Toyota won the Audi Awards at the Out and Equal Awards for their ERG group and their push for LGBTQ plus equity. And by the way, just something to get ready for, their LGBTQ plus ERG has updated company policy to fly the quote, progress flag at Toyota's US locations. And do you guys think Toyota allows their Christian employees to fly a Christian flag the way they allow the LGBTQ plus group to fly their flag? I don't think so. And again, this is divisive to people because many people disagree with the idea of transitioning children. And this flag has come to prominence as a byproduct of the movement to legalize the transition of children. Spectrum is the name of Toyota's LGBTQ plus ERG. They also were responsible in part of creating a self-identification policy. That policy ensures that coworkers have to call you by whatever name or pronoun you decide you now suddenly are. So if you're Bob today, but you decide you're Betty tomorrow, Tomorrow, well, they better say she, her, and call you Betty, or you're a bigot. Toyota also has a diversity supplier program, again, giving, quote, diverse suppliers preferential treatment over suppliers who are, quote, non-diverse, aka white. I'm not sure how anybody sees this as anything other than discrimination. Here's the reality, how the world is supposed to work. Whoever is the best supplier, they should get the contract. Whoever is best for the job should get the job. Your race is never supposed to be considered in hiring, neither is your sex. I'm a minority myself and I'm disgusted by these programs. I just want everybody treated fairly. We're gonna have the contact information in the caption for you to be able to reach out to Toyota and tell them yourself how you feel about them adopting DEI, woke policies, and supporting the transition of children. But the last thing I wanna do here is speak directly to the Toyota executives because I know they will be watching. Let me be very clear about what our movement wants. We want something very simple. I don't need you to adopt our politics. I don't need you to message our politics. We just want neutrality. We want fairness. That means treat everybody kind at work. That should be the expectation. But we don't want to worry about if a company is going to use the money we spend with them to turn around and give it to an organization that either explicitly hates us or will use it to fund things that are diametrically opposed to our deeply held values. We we don't want to know what your politics are. They could be anything. We just want to be able to buy a product from you. But unfortunately, you have forced us into a position where we now need to go and check to see if the company is going to be supporting the craziest woke things of the day. So please, just step away from the divisive policy. Stay out of social issues, stay out of politics, unless it directly affects your ability to make cars, period. This video is already so long and I didn't have time to even put in the stuff about woke trainings, the crazy interviews with executives, or any of the other stuff we found but we will release those separately. I do, however, need to say this needs to stop, period. But I am going to warn you guys, Toyota is captured by woke. I honestly think they may be the first company that does not change any policy, but it's your job to make sure they regret that. So use your wallet as a weapon, use your voice and speak up. If you love what we're doing exposing woke companies and removing woke policies at corporations, then you can support us by subscribing to my X page for $5 a month. Or if you don't want to subscribe, just go to robbystarbuck.com slash DEI. If you want to expose your company for going woke, then please also give us a tip at robbystarbuck.com slash DEI. You can let us know about your company there and we can review it to see if it will be one of the companies that we feature to expose and hopefully change policy at.